I apologize, but my audio cast was interrupted by a very loud exchange between a Dollar Tree employee and someone else in this community. What we were talking about was the Ten Commandments, and the Sixth Ten Commandment is you shall not murder. And openly what it's talking about is you should not go after someone's soul. You should not go after someone's loins. You should not go after someone's body. Because when you do that, you think you're quite the hottie, I'm sure, but the reality is you've disparaged yourself. God chooses people to be in our life. God actually chooses who should be our spouse or our wife. God chooses and puts those people on our path, but many times people lose themselves by murdering someone's soul, by murdering their life, by lying about them, by disparaging them, by literally doing a lot to them. If we've done that to ourselves by our own behavior, that's one thing. If we don't recognize those things, that's another. What I'm talking about is this concept of you shall not murder includes going after someone's soul, includes the constant insult that you are being told, includes when people simply disparage someone in response, really implying that the person is out of control, out of whack, out of sync, out of, well, what should be sold. And that's a lie that siblings often tell. It's a lie that friends often want to sell. It's a lie that colleagues often, well, foretell, because your behavior precedes you. The seventh commandment is you shall not commit adultery. Here's the reality. Most every human being on the face of the planet has committed some form of adultery. Young boys and girls fall in love with their teachers all the time. Is that not a form of adultery, or is that just a child fantasizing or literally learning what is beautiful to them? In the life of a man, though, we have the opportunities to say no. Last evening, I was being solicited by a girl who was barely clothed, and I didn't like it because I am old-fashioned, I am old-school, and I was communicating clearly. I'm not interested in what you have to sell right now. I have other things to do. I have other things in which my mind was dwell, and I don't want you in my life or in anywhere near me today. It's because she had met me the night before, but she put a play on that. And I didn't like what I saw, I didn't like what I felt, I didn't like the pressure to have to help, but I did help, but I don't want it to be presumed that we have a relationship now. I was a little bit besides myself because I had a lot of things on my mind, and I was trying to focus on something that I was trying to create. Now I'm sharing a little bit off cuff, I'm sharing a little bit in the rough, but here's what I'm saying. This concept of adultery is about what people do in their mouth what they say to people, what they play with people, and eventually it's what they do with people. You see, a person can literally take someone all the way down into an intimate level of conversation and then never follow through on what God has planned for them. And that's the foolishness of women today. You shall not steal is our eighth commandment, and that's pretty straightforward. God provides for every human being on the planet. God gives what he needs to give to people. God rules the house of the Lord's house, which is, we're going to provide you this. I have a latent situation of which I received some so soji uh, plastics, basically, that were in a house that was Asian. And I had simply just said a week or so before, I'd really like to have something like this for the decoration of my classroom. And lo and behold, I got a call a little later from someone who understood the value of proper decoration in a business and called and said, I found these for you. And you said, great, how much are they? I think they end up being $20. Like, buy them. I can handle that. No problem. You see, what we're talking about is how God provides for us. When a man is looking for a wife, he provides that information when he says, Lord, I'm not feeling this is working for me. I'm really wanting something else. And in walks the most important fortune of a man's life. But she's foolish and doesn't get it. So we have to look at whether we're stealing people from other people. Are we stealing people through our mouths? Are we stealing people's time? Are we stealing a parent from a child who needs them? Are we stealing by our inappropriate gossip, our illegal talk, our foolish ideas, and our idiotic opinions? There are ways that people steal a lot of things. They steal ideas, they steal friends, they steal colleagues, they steal business, they steal opportunities, they steal intellectual property, they steal copywritten work, and they certainly steal possessions. In the ninth commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. This is a big one, a huge one. Bearing false witness is calling a police officer on something that you know nothing about. Bearing false witness is involving people in a person's life that don't have the right to be there. Bearing false witness is saying, I'm going to do this regardless of how I feel. And bearing false witness is harming a life because of your inability to squeal. Now when I make these silly little rhymes, I'm trying to get you to pay attention to your time. Because your time in life is only your time in life. 
But when you disparage someone's name, when you ruin their name, when you provide false information from your immaturity to talk and have a real life and a real relationship, that's on your life before God. The tenth commandment is you shall not covet. People covet things all the time. It's a major problem in many different ethnic groups that they literally don't look at the person they're talking to. They look at their bags, they look at their clothes, they look at their property, they look at their cart, they look at what they purchase, and they do this on a regularity. It's immoral what they're doing because they're coveting what someone else has chosen to purchase with the leadership of God or whatever they believe is working in their minds to make those purchases, to provide themselves those possessions, to receive gifts, to put those lists out there at Christmas, whatever it might be. But coveting can also be the coveting of someone's other opportunities. And that coveting is what police officers do every single day. They take information about me and you. They take intellectual property. They take legal documents. They do all sorts of things. They take photographs of someone you love, and then they pursue them to ruin that opportunity for you.